Hey guys, welcome back to lesson 5 in our Python for Anxious Artists series. In this video, we will be talking all about strings and string manipulation. So this is a topic that you'll want to really get familiar with because we do it all the time, whether it's manipulating file paths or manipulating object hierarchies in Maya. This is something that we do all the time when we are having to automate our tasks. So I'm excited for what you will learn in this lesson. Hi, if you don't know me and you're new to this channel, my name's Nelson. I'm a VFX artist as well as an educator. And in this channel and on my website, nelsonlim.com, I help other CG practitioners create more, earn more, and live more. So remember to subscribe if you like this sort of content and hit the bell so you get notified when new content arrives. Finally, don't forget our playlist in the description below so that you can check out all of our previous videos in this series. So, since we're at the topic of movie quotes, I have another movie quote here. With this quote, I want the computer to print it with those double quotes at the beginning and at the end. Now, the problem I face is typically those double quotes are going to present themselves as a string. So, let's go ahead and print this as is and see what results do we get. We lose the double quotes in our print statement because those double quotes are what contains the string. So how do we insert those double quotes in there? We use what we call a, an escape character, which in this case is a backslash. So we just type backslash followed by a double quote, which is what we want to escape. And right at the end, let's do another escape character, a backslash, and then another double quotes. Let's see what the result is right now. So the escape character basically tells me to ignore those quotes and use them in my string. This can also be used to escape backslashes and any other characters like tabs or new lines that have some sort of special meaning to Python. If we were to do this, I'm actually going to get a syntax error because the Python interpreter actually thinks that I'm trying to escape the double quote. It doesn't see that this string is ending. So to avoid this problem, what we can do is hit backslash because what I want to do is actually print the backslash. So the first backslash escapes the second backslash so that it is printable. And that's exactly what happens. So let's talk about the topic of slicing or splicing a string. Remember that strings are just a series of characters. Well, we can splice them. Over here, I have yet another movie quote. In order to slice or splice a string, we can use the square brackets to help us do that. Within the square brackets, we specify an index or a position that we want to start the splice from and a position that we want to end the splice in. So in this case, say I give an example of one, two, five. And let's take a look at the results. Very interesting results. From this results, I can tell that it does contain the character up to the fifth character here, A, but it actually does not include the first character. Well, the reason is because we should note that computers generally count from zero and not from one. So if I had instead specified zero, I would have gotten the first character. Now remember, we talked about strings being immutable or that they cannot be changed in place after creating them. Well, splicing does not actually change them. It merely returns a copy of the string that was spliced. So let's take a look. If we print quote right now, it actually still returns the actual quote. Splicing the quote does not change the original variable. However, we could always assign another variable to the splice, or we could assign the same variable again to the splice. And now when we print quote, it's been sliced. And this is merely overriding 
the value that the original quote variable contained. So let's go ahead and do a few more operations. With quote, we could say starting from the beginning, but not offer an end. And that will give us the entire quote. Or we could say start from the sixth, or technically the seventh character, all the way till the end. Or we could even specify, very interestingly, let's start from the sixth character, but I want you to end at the second character from the last. And so we specify negative two. And so the second character from the last, which is negative two, it should exclude the period and it should exclude the Y. And that's exactly what we got. Now the same thing can be done if you wanted to have the entire um, quote from the beginning, but you just didn't want the last two characters. You could just drop um, the first index before the colon. And that's all you have. I use this all the time. This is extremely useful. And so it's very good to know how to slice and splice a string. So let's look at how to convert a string into all upper or all lower case. With my quote, I'm going to use the quote period upper. And so when you look at this, this looks oddly like a function. And you could say it is a function. It is a special type of function which we will call methods. And what this allows us to do is it is a special method or function that is associated with string variables. With quote.upper, it returns me rosebud in all upper quotes. Now, once again, if I were to print quote, it does not change quote itself. However, if I were to specify upper underscore quote equals to quote dot upper quote dot upper returns me an uppercase quote and I'm storing it into upper quote. In the same way, you can lower you can change all your strings into lowercase by simply using the lowercase method. How do we search for and replace characters in a string? Let's begin with our quote. String objects have a method called find. So let's see what this does. The find method returns us the index of the first instance where this word or this series of characters are found. So in this case, it is at index 6 of the quote string. When quote does not find a word or a series of characters within the string, it returns negative 1. Another way that's useful to find words or quotes within the string is to get it to return sort of a true or false. Did it find or did it not find? And so you could always say always in quote it says true because the word always appears in our quote. Similarly, if we search for never in quote, it returns false. Other ways to search and find words is to use ends with or starts with. So let's begin with quote dot ends with. It helps us to look for words and characters and see if it ends with those characters or not. What we'll see is it returns false. And the reason why it returns false is because we neglected to put the dot. So it did not find an exact match at the end of the string. Now with the period, it found an exact match. Similarly, if we were to do quote dot starts with will and that should return true. Now we can also replace characters or words in a string with the method called replace. So let's replace Paris with New York. Uh, 
um, we'll always have New York. Well, let's now figure out how to join a number to a string. So I have my quote here, just keep swimming, finding Nemo. And I want to add the year that the quote, uh, that the movie was made. So I'm going to do quote equals to quote plus put a space in there and the year 2003. This actually gives me a traceback. And if you read the traceback, and it's very important to learn how to understand to read the traceback, is it tells you type error can only concatenate stir, not integer to stir. So I know it's some sort of a type error. It's not able to, it can only join strings and it doesn't know how to join an integer. Well, simple enough. Let's use what we've learned so far to fix this problem. We can convert our integer into a string. And let's see if we have the same problem. No. So now, when we print quote, we have a proper quote. We have covered some of the more common things we can do to strings, but there is so much more we have just scratched the surface. You can find more methods that come with string objects in the Python documentation, which I will link in the description below. Hey guys, I'm so happy to hear all the feedback about how these videos have helped you. If this video has added value to you, please remember to hit the like button. And finally, let's go on to question of the day. Recognize any movie quotes in this video. If you do, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you next week for more tutorials, tips, and insights to help you create more, earn more, and live more.